want to generate infinite worlds like this one or that one? In this video we will make our terrain completely endless. Let's go! Let's create a new actor. Call it landscape. It will be responsible for placing our chunks in the world. Also let's rename our BP Diamond Square to just chunk. Now go to our landscape, go to event graph, remove this and uh, call uh, spawn actor from class function. Choose uh, chunk here, split uh, transform pin, compile save, now go to chunk class. We need to remove everything from construction script and uh, move this uh, to event graph and uh, connect with uh, begin play. Compile save. Also let's uh, set default uh, values, scale to 100, UV scale to 1, Z multiplier to 1000, material to grass, compile, save. Now let's remove uh, our PP diamond square from the scene and uh, place our landscape in our scene. Set location to 0 and uh, hit play. As you can see, our chunk is uh, successfully generated. Now we need to make it possible to set uh, chunk parameters from the landscape class. So to do this we need to move all these variables to landscape uh, class. So let's uh, do this. As you can see I created uh, all the parameters inside the landscape uh, class and uh, organized them a little bit and uh, changed the uh, x and y size with uh, size because uh, we need our chunks to have a shape of square and uh, also I uh, set uh, mean uh, size value to 1 and uh, set mean scale and UV scale value to a very small number because they shouldn't be negative. Now go to chunk class, create new variable, call it size, it's integer, right click on x size, click replace references, select our size and uh, find and replace all references. Confirm. Now we can delete x size and do the same with uh, y size. And uh, delete y size. Now we need to go back to our landscape actor and uh, set uh, chunk parameters using landscape uh, parameters. So let's create a new function called uh, set uh, chunk parameters. Let's make it uh, private because we need to use it only inside this class. Also let's uh, go to chunk class and uh, make create vertices private and uh, create triangles private too because uh, we don't need to use them outside of this class. And uh, now go back to this function and uh, add the input class chunk and uh, let's call it chunk. Now we need to get chunk and uh, set its size using size from the landscape. And we need to do this with every variable. So as you can see I set every chunk variable to a variable from our landscape class. Now we need to go back to event graph and uh, call our set chunk parameters function. Then we need to go to chunk and uh, select everything, promote it to function. Let's call it generate, remove it from begin play. Also let's promote this to a variable, call it chunk. After setting chunk parameters we need to generate our chunk. So we just call our generate function. Let's go to our scene. Set uh, size to 50 for example, scale to 500, hit play. Our landscape is generated. Also we can uh, go to our chunk, go to generate function, go to create uh, vertices function 
and remove print string because we don't need a it anymore. Imagine a grid where each section is 100 by 100 units. Single chunk fits into a single section and there is a player in the middle. We want to generate chunks around the player. The number of chunks generated depends on the distance variable. For example, if distance equals 1, we generate 8 chunks around the player and if distance equals 2, we generate 16 more chunks. So let's set distance to 1. Now if player moves to this section, we will generate new chunks here. And if after that player moves to that section, we will generate new chunks there. Firstly, let's make scale variable to be responsible not for the distance uh, between the vertices, but for the actual size of the chunk in the world. So let's go to our chunk class, rename scale to vertex distance, go to our landscape, go to set chunk parameters function, and here we need to divide scale by size collapse it to collapsed graph go to our scene let's set scale to 5000 hit play now the size of the whole chunk is 5000 by 5000 units the other thing we need to do is to make pivot of the chunk to be in the center instead of being in the bottom left corner. So let's go to our chunk. Let's collapse this to collapsed graph. Now we need to remove this. Take our size, divide it by minus 2, add x and multiply by vertex distance pass it to x and let's do the same for y also we need to do basically the same for uv so select all this except vertex distance and uh, promote it to function let's make it uh, pure and uh, private. Now let's go inside this function, remove p2 variable, rename it to scale or it's better to rename it to distance, get distance Let's rename them to x index and y index and it returns x and y coordinates. Pass x and y to this function and do the same for uv. Change vertex distance to uv scale. Go to our scene, let's select our chunk and you can see that uh, now pivot is in the center. To avoid generating chunks unnecessarily, we need to check if a chunk has already been generated. We do this by storing the position of each chunk and by position I mean not its exact world coordinate, but the coordinate of the section where the chunk belongs. So the position of the chunk in the center is 0, 0. on the right is 1, 0. On the top left is minus 1, 1. First of all, we should calculate position of the chunk under the player. So, open Content Drawer, right click, choose uh, Structure, name it uh, Chunk Position, add variable, call them x and uh, y, choose type integer, go to Landscape Blueprint, create new variable here, call it Current, select type chunk position. Now return to event graph, set our current variable and uh, to set it get player pawn and then uh, get actor location, split this, then we need to get our scale and divide coordinate over scale. Split uh, our structure, 
this goes to X, copy this, and this goes to Y. Let's collapse this to graph. Now we have to generate chunks around player, so let's create for loop. First index equals to distance multiplied by minus 1, so let's create this variable. Let's organize the variables a little bit. Don't forget to make it public. Now get this variable, multiply it by minus 1. The last uh, index equals to distance. We need to promote index to variable called x. And uh, we need to do th this for y, so let's collapse this to macro. Copy it, paste, promote this index to y. Now create a new variable called visible, drag it, split the pin, take our current variable, split it, add the x to it, connect with visible x and do the same with y. Collapse it to graph named set visible. Now we need to check if a chunk was already generated, so let's create a new variable call it uh, generated, it will be a set of variables, call function contain, pass our visible variable, then call function branch. If the chunk wasn't generated, we can spawn new chunk. Let's also collapse it to graph. And the last thing we need to do is to calculate location of new chunk based on uh, its position. To do this, we need to take our visible variable, split it and multiply each output by our scale. Collapse it. And uh, after generating the chunk, we need to add new chunk position to generate its set. Let's collapse everything. And also change begin play to tick. Go to the scene, choose landscape, set distance to 1, size to 1, scale to 500 for example, set multiplier to 1, and let's try it. As you can see, we generate new chunks. But if I set uh, that multiplier to 1000, for example, and the uh, size to 2, for example, and scale to 1000, you can see that these are all the same chunks. So we need to fix this too. But it can be fixed really easily. In the chunk class, uh, create new variable, call it x offset, make it float and uh, create new variable, call it y offset, then uh, go to calculate z graph, add this variable to this result, then go to landscape, and uh, in the set chunk parameter function, get chunk, set x offset, and uh, to calculate offset, we need to get size, and multiply it by our visible coordinate. Same for y, collapse, now go to our scene, you can play around with these variables to achieve good result by yourself, but for example I will set distance to 4, size to 8, scale to 1500, z multiplier to 1500, seed to 0, and uh, I will try. As you can see now, we have endless landscape. See you in the next video!